Warning, this kid is rated R. I had warned mom about August's face. I had described what it looks like. I did this because I know she's not always so good at faking her feelings. And August was coming over for the first time today. I even sent her a text at work to remind her about it. But I could tell from the expression on her face when she came home after work that I hadn't prepared her enough. She was shocked when she came through the door and saw his face for the first time. Hi, mom, this is Augie. Can he stay for dinner? I asked quickly. It took a second for my question to even register. Hi, Augie. She said, um, of course, sweetheart, if that's okay with Augie's mother. While Augie called his mom on, this, on his cell phone, I whispered to mom, stop making that weirded out face. She had um, that look like when she's watching the news something her and something horrific happened. She nodded quickly um, like she hadn't realized she was making the face and she was really nice. And then she was really nice and normal to August, um, Augie afterwards. After a while, Augie and I got tired of working on our project and went to hang out in the living room. Augie was looking at all the pictures on the mantle and he saw pictures of me and daddy. Is that your dad? He said, yeah, I didn't know you, um, didn't know you were, what's the word? Biracial? Right. That's the word. Yeah. He looked up at the painting, uh, the picture again. Are your parents divorced? I mean, I never see him at drop off or anything. Oh no. I said, he is a pl uh, platoon so soldier, uh, sergeant. He died a few years ago. Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah. I nodded, handing him the picture, um, handing him a picture of my dad in the uniform. Wow. Look at those medals. Yeah. He was pretty awesome. Wow. Summer. I'm sorry. Yeah. It sucked. I really miss him a lot. Yeah. Wow. He nodded, handing me back the pictures. Have you known anyone who ever died, I asked? Just my grandmother, and I don't even really remember her. That's too bad. Augie nodded. You ever wonder what happens to people when they die, I asked. He shrugged. Not really. I mean, I guess they go to heaven, and that's uh, where my grands went. I think about it a lot, I said. I think that when people die, their souls go to heaven, but um, just for a little while, like, um, that's where they see their old friends and stuff, and they kind of catch up for old times. But then I actually think, the souls start um, thinking about their uh, lives on earth, like if they were good or bad or whatever, and then they get um, born again as brand new babies in this world. Why would you want to do that? Because then you get another chance to get it right, I answered. Their souls get a chance to, to have a do-over. He thought about this, um, what I was saying, and then nodded, kind of like when you get a makeup test, he says, right. But they don't come back looking the same, he says. I mean, they look completely different when they come back. Oh yeah, I answered. Your soul stays the same, but everything else is different. I like that. He said, nodding a lot. I really like that, Summer. That means in the next life, I won't be stuck with this face. He pointed at his face and he made, um, he said, when he said that, and he batted his eye eyes, which makes me laugh. I guess not, I shrugged. Hey, I might even be handsome, he said, smiling. That would be so awesome, Could, wouldn't it? I couldn't, I could come back and be this good looking dude and super buff and tall. I laughed again. He was such a good sport about himself. That's the one thing I liked, um, liked the most about Augie. Hey, Augie, can I ask you a question? Yeah, he said, like he knew exactly what I wanted to ask. I hesitated. I've been waiting to ask him this for a while, but always lost the gut to ask. What? He said, you want to know what's wrong with my face? Yeah, I guess so, if that's okay for me to ask. Yeah, it's no big deal, he said casually. The main thing is I have this thing called fish facial disto uh, dystosis, which makes me look, um, which took me forever to learn how to pronounce, by the way. But I also have this other syndrome thing that I can't even pronounce. And these things um, kind of just morph together into one big super thing, which is so rare they don't even have a name for it. I mean, I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm actually considering something of the medi uh, of a medical wonder, you know. He smiled. That was a joke, he said. You can laugh. I smiled and shook my head. You're funny, Augie, I said. Yes, I am, he said proudly, and I'm cool beans. The Egyptian tomb. Over the next month, August and I hung out after school a lot, either at his house or mine. August's parents even invited mom and me over for dinner a couple of times. I overheard them talking about fixing mom up on a blind date with August's uncle Ben. On the day of the Egyptian Museum exhibit, we were all really excited and kind of giddy. It had snowed the day before, not as much as it snowed over Thanksgiving break, but still, snow is snow. The gym turned into a giant museum with everyone in Egyptian artifacts displayed on the tables with little captions cards explaining what the thing was. Most of the artifacts were really great, but I have to say I really think mine and August's were the best. My sculpture of Anubis looked pretty cool, 
and um, I had even used real gold paint on it. And August had made his step pyramid out of sugar cubes. It was two feet high and two feet long. And he had spray painted the cubes with this kind of fake sand paint or something. It looked so awesome. We all dressed up in Egyptian costumes. Some of the kids were um, Indiana Jones archaeologists. Some of us dressed up like pharaohs. August and I dressed up like mummies. Our faces were covered except for the two little holes um, for our eyes and the uh, one little hole from our mouth. When the parents showed up, they lined up in the hall in front of the gym. They were told we could get, uh, we could go get our parents and each kid um, got to take his or her parent on a flashlight through the flashlight tour through the dark gym. August and I took our moms together. We stopped at each exhibit explaining what um, it was, talking in whispers, answering questions. Since it was dark, we used our flashlights to illuminate the artifacts while, ta uh, while talking. Sometimes for dramatic effect, we would hold the flashlight under our chins while we were explaining something in detail. It was so much fun hearing all the whispers in the dark and seeing the light zigzagging around the room. At one point, I went over to get a drink from the water fountain. I had to take the mummy wrap off. Hey, Summer, said Jack, who came over to talk to me. He dressed like the man from the mummy. Cool costume. Thanks. Is the other mummy August? Yeah. Um, hey, do you know why August is mad at me? Uh-huh. I nodded. Can you tell me? No. He nodded and he seemed bum. I told him I wouldn't tell you, I explained. It's so weird. I have no idea why he's mad at me all of a sudden. None. Can't give, can you at least give me a hint? I looked over at August from um, across the room talking to our moms. I wasn't about to break up my solid oath and I wouldn't tell anyone about what I, uh, he overheard on Halloween, but I felt bad for Jack. Bleeding scream, I whispered into his ears and then walked away. Part four, Jack. Now here's my secret, it's very simple. It's only with one heart um, that one can, can clear, uh, see clearly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. The call. So in August, my parents got a call from Mr. Tushman in the middle, of this, uh, the middle school's director. And my mom said, maybe he calls all the new students to welcome them. And my dad said, that's a lot of kids he's calling. So my mom called him back and I could hear her talking to Mr. Tushman on the phone. This is exactly what she said. Oh, hi, Mr. Tushman, this is Amanda Will returning your call. Pause. Oh, thank you. That's so nice of you to say. He's looking forward to it. Pause. Yes. Pause. Yeah. Pause. Oh, sure. Long pause. Oh, uh-huh. Pause. Well, that's so nice of you to say. Pause. Sure. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, super long pause. I see, of course. I'm sure he will. Let me write it down. Mm-hmm. Got it. I'll call you after I've had a chance to talk to him. Okay? Pause. No, thank you for thinking of him. Bye-bye. And when she hung up, I was like, whoa. What was up? What did he say? And mom said, well, it's actually very flattering, but kind of sad too. See, there's this boy who's um, starting middle school this year and he's never been to a real school environment before because of, he was homeschooled. So Mr. Tushman talked to some of the lower school teachers and to find out who they thought were some of the really, really great kids coming into fifth grade. And the teachers must have told him you were an especially nice kid, which I already knew, of course. And so Mr. Tushman is wondering if he could count on you to sort of shepherd this new boy around a bit. Like, let him hang out with me, I said. Exactly, said mom. Um, he called it the being a welcome buddy, but why me? I told you, your teachers told Mr. Tushman that you were the kind of kid who is known for being a good egg. I mean, I'm so proud that they think so highly of you. Why is it sad? What do you, what do you mean? You said it's flattering, but it's kind of sad too. Oh, mom nodded. Well, apparently this boy has some sort of, um, I guess there's something wrong with his face or something like that. Not sure. Maybe he was in an accident. Mr. Tushman said he'd explain a bit more when you come into school next week. School doesn't start till September. He wants you to meet this kid before school starts. Do I have to? Mom looked a bit surprised. Well, no, of course not, he said, but it would be a nice thing to do, Jack. If I don't have to do it, I said, I don't want to do it. Can you at least think about it? I'm thinking about it and I don't want to do it. Well, I'm not going to force you, she said, but at least think about it some more, okay? I'm not calling Mr. Tushman back until tomorrow, so just sit with it um, a bit. I mean, Jack, I really don't think this is mu that much to ask that you spend a little extra time with some new kid. It's just not, it's not just he's a new kid, Mom, I answered. He's deformed. That's a terrible th thing to say, Jack. He is, Mom. You don't even know who it is. Yeah, I do, I said, because I knew the second she started talking about him that it was a kid named August. 
Cavrell. I remember seeing him the first time in front of Cavrell on Amherst Forest Avenue when I was about five or six. Me and Veronica, my babysitter, were sitting on the bench outside the store with Jamie, my baby brother, who was sitting in a stroller facing us. I guess I was busy eating my ice cream cone because I didn't notice the people who sat next to us. Then at one point I turned my head and su um, to suck the ice cream out of the bottom of the cone and that's when I saw him, August. He was sitting right next to me. I, I know it wasn't cool, but I kind of went, ugh, when I saw him because I honestly got scared. I thought he was wearing a zombie mask or something. It was kind of, ugh, um, you say, when you're watching a scary movie and a bad guy like that jumps out. Anyways, I know it wasn't nice of me to do that, and though I did, um, the kid didn't hear me, I know his sister did. Jack, we have to go, said Veronica. She got up and she was turning the stroller around because Jamie, who had obviously just noticed the kid too, was just about to say something embarrassing. So I jumped up kind of suddenly like um, a bee had landed on me and followed Veronica as she zoomed away. I could hear the kid's mom saying something softly behind us. Okay, guys, I think it's time to go. And I turned around to look them um, one more time. This kid was licking the ice cream cone. The mom was picking up the, his scooter and the sister was glaring at me like I, she was going to kill me. I looked away quickly. Veronica, what's wrong with that kid? I whispered, hush boy, she said, her voice angry. I love Veronica, but when she got mad, she got mad. Meanwhile, Jamie practically spilling out of the stroller trying to get another look as Veronica pushed him away. But Veronica, said Jamie, you boys were very naughty, very naughty, said Veronica, as soon as we um, were further down the block, staring like that. I didn't mean to, I said. Veronica, said Jamie. Us leaving like that, Veronica was muttering, oh Lord, that poor lady, I'll tell you boys, every day we should thank the Lord for our blessings. You hear me? Veronica, what is it, Jamie? Is it Halloween? No, Jamie. Then why did that boy was wearing a mask? Veronica didn't answer. Sometimes when you, she was mad about something, she would do that. He wasn't wearing a mask, I explained to Jamie. Hush, Jack, said Veronica. Why are you so mad, Veronica? I couldn't help but asking. I thought this would make her angry, but it actually, she just shook her head. It was bad how we did that, she said, just getting up like that, um, like we'd just seen the devil. I was scared for what Jamie was going to say, you know. I didn't want him to say anything that would hurt the little boy's feelings, but it was very bad us leaving like that. The mom, mama knew what was going on, but we didn't mean it, I answered. Jack, sometimes you don't have to mean to hurt someone. Um, you understand? That was the first time I ever saw August in the neighborhood, at least that I remember. But I've seen him around ever since. A couple of times in the playground, a few at the times of the park. He used to wear an astronaut helmet sometimes, but I always knew it was him underneath the helmet. All the kids in the neighborhood knew him. Everyone has seen August at some point or another. We all know his name, though he doesn't know ours. And whenever I've seen him, I try to remember what Veronica said, but it's hard. It's not, it's hard not to sneak a second look. It's hard not to act normal when you see him. Why I changed my mind. Who else did Mr. Tishman call? I asked mom later that night. Did he tell you? He mentioned Julian, uh, Julian and Charlotte. Julian, I said, oh, why Julian? He used to be friends with Julian. Mom, that was when I was in kindergarten. Julian's the biggest phony there is, and he's trying so hard to be popular all the time. Well, said mom, at least Julian agreed to help the kid out. Got to give it to him credit for that. I didn't say anything because she was right. What about Charlotte, I asked. Is she doing it too? Yes, mom said. Of course she is. Charlotte is such a goody two-shoes, I answered. Boy, Jack, said mom, you seem to have a problem with everybody these days. It's just, I started, mom, you have no idea what this kid looks like. I can imagine. No, you can't. You've never seen him. I have. It might not even be who you're thinking it is. Trust me, mom. It is, and I'm telling you, it's really, really bad. He's deformed, Mom. His eyes are like down here, I pointed to my cheeks, and he has no ears and his mouth's like, Jamie walked into the kitchen to get a juice box from the fridge. Ask Jamie, I said, right, Jamie? Remember the kid we saw in the park after school last year, the kid named August, the one with the face? Oh, that kid, said Jamie, his eyes opening wide. He gave me, an, he gave me nightmares. Remember, Mommy, that nightmare about the zombie from last year? I thought that was what from watching scary movies, Mom answered. No, said Jamie, it was from seeing this kid. When I saw him, I was like, ah, and I ran away. Wait a minute, said mom, getting serious. Did you do that in front of him? I couldn't help it, said Jamie, um, kind of whining. Of course you couldn't help, uh, you could help it, mom scolded. Guys, I have to tell you, I'm really disappointed by what I'm hearing. And she looked like she's, um, like how she sounded. I mean, honestly, he's just a little boy, just like you. Can you imagine how he felt seeing you run away from him, Jamie, screaming? It wasn't, it wasn't a scream, argued Jamie. It was like an ah. He put his hands on his cheeks and started running around the kitchen. 
Come on, Jamie, said Mom angrily. I honestly thought both of my boys were better and more sympathetic than that. What's sympathetic, said Jamie, who was only going on into the second grade. You know exactly what I mean by sympathetic, said uh, Jamie, said Mom. It's just he's so ugly, Mommy, said Jamie. Hey, Mom yelled. I don't like that word. Jamie, you just got your juice, um, just get your juice box um, and go. I want to talk to Jack for a second. Look, Jack, said Mom, as soon as he had left, and I knew she was going about to give me a whole speech. Okay, I'll do it, I said, which completely shocked her. You will? Yes. So can I, can I call Mr. Tushman? Yes, Mom. Yes, I said yes. Mom smiled. I knew you'd race, uh, race to the occasion, kiddo. Good for you. I'm proud of you, Jackie. She messed up my hair. So here's why I changed my mind. I wasn't, it wasn't so I wouldn't have to hear my mom give him the whole lecture. And it wasn't to protect this August kid from Julian, who I knew would be a jerk about the whole thing. It was because I heard, when I heard Jamie talking about how he had to run away from August going, ah, I suddenly felt really bad. The thing is, there's always going to be kids like Julian who are jerks. But if little kids like Jamie, who usually are nice enough kids, can be that mean, then kids like, like August don't stand a chance in middle school.